Welcome to this month's safety training. This month we'll be concentrating on hearing conservation, and we'll be doing that uh, with a video, a couple of videos, and we'll be sharing a couple things in our quiz. It is our hope to get back to doing live training very soon, and kind of excited to be able to do that and meet together. In the meantime, we just want to take time to uh, talk about hearing conservation, especially in the summertime, so many activities and so many things that we do, let alone on our daily work, uh, affect our hearing and on the things that we accomplish and so many things that we can do to take care of our hearing. So today we're going to watch a couple of videos, videos and we'll discuss afterwards and have a quiz. Uh, again, thank you for uh, being part of the safety training this month here in conservation. I started noticing, especially when I was in a crowd of people, that it was harder and harder for me to understand everything that was going on. I could hear people talking but I couldn't make out what they were saying. At home, there was quite a problem. Uh, nobody wanted to watch TV with me because uh, I would have the sound way, way up. Uh, people got very tired of repeating all the time what they had said before. And after a while, they got tired of yelling at me all the time. Fred Ferguson is one of 10 million Americans who have suffered irreversible hearing loss. Well, I started working uh, around noisy places when I was 21. I worked in a scrap metal yard around hydraulic shears, cranes, large forklifts, and from there I started working for ODOT, driving trucks, working with grinders, uh, rollers, graders, all types of asphalt pavement machinery, and I've done that now for about 30 years. Over 30 million workers in America are exposed to hazardously high sound levels on a regular basis. Construction sites with backup alarms, highway traffic, and especially construction machinery, generate noise levels as high as 130 decibels. Any sound over 85 decibels can harm your hearing. The Occupational Safety and Health Administration stresses that habitual exposure to noise averaging 85 decibels or more over an eight-hour day causes gradual hearing loss in most people. Louder noises accelerate this damage. As we age, most of us lose some hair cells and some nerve cells, so most of us develop some sensory neural hearing loss as we get older. Uh, noise exposure is one of the leading causes of sensory neural hearing loss because extreme noise exposure uh, can permanently damage uh, and destroy the hair cells and the nerve cells attached to them. The hair cells in your inner ear are tiny and very fragile. Sound waves wash over them like wind blowing over a field of tall grass. Loud noises are like footsteps trampling that grass. Done once or twice, the grass will pop back up. Done repeatedly, the grass flattens and dies. When the hair cells in your inner ear flatten permanently, you lose some hearing. Permanently. Like the grass, some of your hearing dies. Not all hearing loss leaves you in silence. Continuous noise exposure can also lead to tinnitus, a persistent ringing, roaring, clicking, or hissing sound in your ears. 12 million Americans have tinnitus. Many find it difficult to hear, work, or even sleep. Yeah. Exposure to harmful noise can cause damage to the sensitive hair cells of the inner ear by two methods. An intense brief impulse, such as an explosion or gunshot, or continuous exposure to noise, such as operating a backhoe or pavement grinder daily for many weeks. So, what is too loud? What sound levels cause your inner ear hair cells to flatten to the point that they don't recover? 115 decibels of continuous noise from a jackhammer over a shift without hearing protection will do it. 
using a power actuated nail gun with an impulse or explosion of noise at 120 decibels will do it. So will firing a shotgun with an intense explosive noise of 140 decibels. One exposure to sounds like these takes away some of your hearing. Not a lot, but some. And over time, these little bits can add up to a substantial hearing loss. People don't always notice uh, their own hearing loss because uh, often it progresses gradually. So uh, they don't really know what they're missing and they make accommodations. People learn to read faces and lips. We ask the patient, you know, do you have trouble with your hearing? Uh, and they'll say, no, I've, I've learned to adjust. I'm, uh, you know, I'm doing okay, but it's good when they bring a, a spouse or one of their children or a friend, then you can ask that other person, you know, are they having any trouble with their hearing? And, and everyone, you know, everyone else nods their heads and like, oh yeah, they're having a lot of trouble. They can't understand what we're saying. They can't understand television. Uh, so sometimes you don't get the whole story from the patient, but you get it uh, from people close to the patient. So how much noise are you exposed to? Probably a lot more than you know. Here are some typical decibel readings for noisemakers at work. Remember, every six decibel increase equals a doubling in the sound pressure. When working around this equipment, you need hearing protection. Noise exposure is not limited to your work environment. These are typical decibel readings for the home. Noise exposure depends on the loudness of the sound and also the time that you're exposed to it. The louder the sound is, the less time it takes for it to cause permanent damage. Most people will develop some high frequency hearing loss and that's because of the uh, construction of the cochlea, the inner ear. Uh, sound waves coming in that are uh, extremely loud will hit uh, the high frequency areas of the cochlea first and cause damage. So most people will develop uh, some high frequency hearing loss. So, how is your hearing? Do you ask people to repeat themselves? Do you play the radio or television too loud for your family? Do you feel that you miss some conversation? Do you get tired guessing what people are saying? More importantly, do you work in a noisy environment? To know for certain and to quantify your hearing level, you should take a simple hearing test. In fact, if you work around loud equipment and are exposed to average daily noise levels equaling or exceeding 85 decibels, you are required to have an annual hearing test. The first test establishes a baseline in your hearing. Subsequent tests reveal if your hearing is changing. Although your employer may be required to provide screening tests, these should be viewed as the first step in identifying the type of hearing loss you may have and its severity. Screening tests provided by your employer usually are given in a trailer or on the job site. If they show you have a permanent loss or change and you feel your loss is affecting your ability to hear well, get further evaluation. Eardrum. Eardrum. Otolaryngologists and audiologists help diagnose and measure hearing loss and identify the causes of hearing loss. They perform different tests to assess the type and degree of loss. An audiologist can give you a detailed air conduction test, similar to the hearing test provided by your employer, as well as a bone conduction test, needed to determine if your hearing loss is caused by noise exposure. And it's going to stimulate the inner ear directly. More importantly, the audiologist can determine if your hearing loss affects your ability to hear the spoken word in noisy environments. Noise-induced hearing loss is entirely preventable. Regardless of hearing ability, everyone should work to prevent any future loss. First, identify noise hazard equipment. Identified noise hazards, 
That is, any equipment exceeding 90 decibels should be labeled so workers will know to use hearing protection when operating them. If you don't know the noise levels for the equipment you use, ask your safety representative to get a sound level meter and measure the equipment. Put distance between you and the noise source. Walk away, if possible, or move the noise source away from people and reflective surfaces. Doubling your distance from the noise source can reduce your noise exposure by 50%. Keep the exposure time to a minimum. Plan noisy activities when fewer people are on the site and take breaks from the noise hazard area. If you had a noisy day at work, give your ears a quiet break at home that night. If possible, modify the noise source so it is quieter. Be sure equipment is properly maintained. Retrofit old equipment. Don't forget when you purchase new equipment to buy quiet. And always, always use hearing protection when around loud noises. This applies especially if you have a hearing impairment. Many types of hearing protection are available. Earplugs come in two varieties, preformed and hand-formed. Every earplug comes with a noise reduction rating, an indicator of how much noise the plug stops when tested in a laboratory. A good rule of thumb is to expect the earplug or earmuff to stop about half of what is listed on the package. So, if you're working around a loader generating 93 decibels and the earplugs have a noise reduction rating of 26 decibels, they will bring the noise entering your ear down to a more acceptable 80 decibels. Keep in mind your goal with hearing protection to reduce exposure to below 85 decibels. Canal caps are a good option when you're around intermittent loud noises. They can be inserted and removed quickly, and they hang around your neck when not in use. Muffs provide the best hearing protection. They offer a universal fit and can be worn with earplugs or with hearing aids. Speaking of hearing aids, they are not hearing protection. Your two options are to remove your hearing aid and use protection, or turn off your hearing aid and wear earmuffs over them. Hearing aids do not block out enough sound to protect your hearing. You still need protection to keep your hearing from getting worse. Many people with a hearing loss complain when wearing noise protection. They can't hear what they need to on the construction site. And yes, it is important to hear backup alarms, equipment noises, traffic, and your coworkers. Most hearing protection sold today blocks out the same sound frequencies as the human voice. That can be a problem. So several manufacturers are now marketing flat attenuating earplugs and earmuffs. What if you've suffered some hearing loss? The first thing you need to do is acknowledge that you might have a problem. Waiting will not make it go away. Well, nobody wants hearing aids. Like I tell patients sometimes, you know, uh, Christmas is coming, nobody says, oh boy, hearing aids, just what I always wanted. Nobody really wants them. Um, however, uh, they help uh, so many patients. The bottom line is, they can make a tremendous difference. When I first got my hearing aids here, I remember being in the office there with a person fitting me for them, and I went, wow, you know, I can, I can really tell what he's saying to me. And I got up and I left his office and I walked out in the hall and I go, wow, I can hear my footsteps. I hadn't realized that I hadn't heard myself walk, just the sound of my feet hitting the floor. Uh, there was a fountain about 40 feet away, and I could hear the water gurgling as, as it came down over the rocks. I went out and I got in my pickup, started it up, and I went, wow, turn the noise down because the radio was up so loud. To understand what is being said, people with good hearing generally need spoken words on a radio or CB to be 2 to 5 decibels louder than the background noise. People with hearing loss normally require at least 10 decibels higher than background noise. Remember, small increases in decibels make a big difference. A 10 decibel change increases sound pressure exposure by 90%. If you are having trouble hearing communication radios, CBs, or backup alarms on sites, tell your safety representative. Communication equipment is available to help you hear what you need to and still protect your hearing on dangerous sites. The bottom line is this. 
Protecting your hearing is your responsibility. If your job puts you in loud environments, know the noise hazards. Put distance between you and the noise source if possible. Limit your exposure. Modify the noise source and use hearing protection regardless of the level of hearing ability. The sound you We're going to watch one more video uh, as we approach probably one of my favorite holidays of the year, the 4th of July. Just a, a quick reminder on hearing protection and how uh, fireworks can uh, affect your hearing. We've watched a short video. July 4th is a time of celebration. The sights and sounds of fireworks displays are a festive part of the observance. But did you know, fireworks can be so loud that they can exceed 140 decibels and reach 160 decibels? That's like standing next to a jet taking off. If a firecracker explodes near your ear, you could experience immediate hearing damage. Enjoy fireworks safely. Use hearing protection, such as earplugs or earmuffs. Make sure your family and friends are doing the same. Make sure you're at a safe distance away from where the fireworks are being set off. Then, enjoy the show. So again, as, we, as the 4th of July uh, comes up, please remember uh, to take care of our hearing protection. Also, be smart in your use of fireworks. You know, obviously don't hold it in your hand or shoot Roma candles at your neighbors or your friends, your co-workers, wherever it may apply. Um, just be careful in doing so. Uh, we want everybody to come back uh, from their short, our long weekend in, in safe condition. And, and also just take into account, you know, uh, the things that affect your hearing. Um, and to kind of review, remember it's not just our work exposure that affects our ears. Sometimes the simple things is like running our lawnmower or hammering on something, you know, and in the workplace, it's using a grinder, uh, using air nozzles or sandblasting. There's so many things that either through a sustained exposure or quick burst of sound that can affect our hearing permanently. So take care to wear the proper PPE. Um, we provide earplugs um, in all of our facilities um, and can make them readily available if you don't have them immediately. Uh, if you require some earmuffs or ear, uh, any kind of other hearing protection uh, will be provided for you. Um, the most important thing is, you know, take care of yourself, you know, on, on any job that you do. Um, and if your ears are sore and are, are painful, uh, take note of that. Another thing to watch out for when you're wearing hearing protection, especially the earplugs, uh, walk out, watch out for impaction. You know, sometimes our earwax um, should naturally fall out and should be able to keep it clean. Don't use a Q-tip, but sometimes using an earplug can actually compact it in through your ear. Uh, should you, by the use of earplugs, find that uh, you're having ear pain, discomfort, sometimes it can run down to your jaw, into your throat, uh, take care of uh, All earwax can be removed by a physician very easily. So, you know, keep those things in mind when you're taking care of your ears. Um, hearing, protect, hearing is not something that you usually can recover from even given time. Once you lose part of your hearing, it usually does not recover. So take those things into account, you know, including listening to your music. Uh, musicians, those of you who play music loudly or, or play music, you know, take care of your ears um, and make sure that uh, you cover yourself in that area as well. Thanks for uh, being part of this month's safety training. We look forward to being able to meet face-to-face -face soon. But until then, have a safe and happy 4th of July. Appreciate it.